Good evening, everyone. This is Robert. RJL Network presents another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. The 1972 final week is on the air. Today's date is October 3, 1972. Only two days left in the regular season. We got a game here at Kansas City Municipal Stadium between the Texas Rangers and the Kansas City Royals. The game is not totally meaningless. Let's take a look at how things look. In the National League, it's decided. Uh, the Houston Astros will play the Pittsburgh Pirates in NLDSA. The Chicago Cubs will play the Cincinnati Reds in NLDSB. The American League, the five playoff teams are, we have five playoff teams or possible six. So this year, only nine out of 12 teams made the postseason. The Oakland Athletics have clinched number one in home field throughout. The Red Sox have clinched the American League East. They are the number two seed. The Baltimore Orioles, the Yankees, and the Kansas City Royals still have a shot to get the three seed. That's what's at stake tonight, or at least part of it. Baltimore Orioles right now have a board, have a four and two board record to Kansas City's two and two board record. The Orioles have a doubleheader and ten minute ticker. They do not play on the last day of the season. So the last two games, the two games that the Orioles have against Cleveland are the last two games Baltimore will play. In order for Kansas City to get the three seed, Kansas City's got to win tonight and tomorrow. But even if they win tonight, if Baltimore wins both games of the doubleheader against Cleveland, Baltimore will clinch the three seed. The Yankees, however, are only a half game back of Kansas City for the four seed. This could decide, okay, who has the home field and the wild card playoff. So the this is still so three, four, and five are up for grabs tonight. And uh, as I said, if Baltimore wins both games tonight in the in 10-minute ticker, no matter what Kansas City does, Baltimore will clinch the three seed, and they will play the Boston Red Sox in the ALDS. A Kansas City, if Baltimore loses any games, Kansas City does have a chance. If they Kansas City wins tonight, they still have a shot to get. They still have a shot to get the three. The Yankees do play the Milwaukee Brewers today and tomorrow for the final two games of the season. So that is what's at stake tonight. It is a meaningless game for the Rangers, but the Royals, it's not a meaningless game for them. Phoenix Knight, John Haverly, Doug Sessoms, Craig Scarborough, Brian Patterson, Brian B., and Jeremy Brooks join us here at Municipal Stadium. The Rangers come into this game a record of 67 and 85. They're already thinking of the next replay. The Royals, 81 and 71. They would like to bypass the wild card and go straight to the division series. The Rangers historically won this game. The Rangers, three runs, eight hits, and an error. The Royals, no runs, eight hits, and no errors. But uh, so far, inside pitch has been changing history. As Frank Rosenk joins us here at Municipal Stadium. So it is a full-size crowd here at KC Municipal. Uh, the Royals fans know what's at stake. A chance to get straight to the division series. They got to win tonight and hope Baltimore at least loses one of the two games against Cleveland in the 10-minute ticker. What will happen tonight? Your guess is good as mine as Jim Doyle joins us here at Municipal Stadium. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting pitcher for the Kansas City Royals tonight is Steve Busby. He only made five starts in 72. This was one of them, and it didn't do too bad in the five starts. Three wins, a loss, a 1-5-70 ERA, 31 strikeouts, and eight walks in uh, 72. Municipal Stadium is definitely a, is a uh, what I call a super pitcher's park. Only 57 home runs, minus two to strikeouts, but minus one to homers. It was not easy to hit a ball out there in out of the park in 72. And now that I've said that, we'll have like 20 home runs. The Rangers do have pretty much, they have a main lineup with a couple of call-ups. Uh, the Royals do as well. But let's see what happens in a game here where the Rangers, the Rangers say they're going to play hard. They want to beat the Royals and give the Royals a headache. Well, let's see how things go. Let's go to the top of the first. Leading off for the Rangers will be the center fielder, Dave Nelson, a 226 average, two homers, 
and 28 RBIs. He's in center field for this game. We're going to use blue, white, and white dice. Royals are the home team. Royals trying to maybe get the three seed. They must win and hope Baltimore loses at least one game against one game against the Indians. And then the Royals, it depends what will happen. We'll see what game we'll choose tomorrow. Um, either we could do the Rangers and Royals again, or we may do the Brewers and the Yankees. We'll see what happens as we get to that ticker. Meanwhile, let's get to the first pitch. Busby, 6-3, strikeout 6, and got him. Swing and a miss, struck him out. First strikeout for Busby is he'll get Nelson. And now they'll bring up the shortstop. Toby Hara, a young Toby Hara, and I think you guys could say that maybe Toby Hara was a pretty much underrated shortstop. 259 average, a homer, and 31 RBIs. One of the, played with the Rangers a long time. Busby with the pitch. 3-2, home run chance. Righty, though, a zero, not happening. Hara, a 5-6, and that's a base hit. He'll hit that one past the shortstop, and Hara will get on base. Next up is the first baseman, Larry Bittner, a 259 average, three homers, and 31 RBIs in 72. Infield's a double play depth, and Hara had 16 stolen bases. He won't get any, any extra here. Busby will pitch. Busby, 4-3. Pitcher result, 13 is too high. Bittner, 2-5. Against the righty, it's a base hit right up the middle and past the pitcher. Harris got great speed. He will make third. And just like that, the Rangers have runners at the corners. And one out. Fans here at Kansas City know you don't want to lose to a team that's got nothing to play for. Next batter for the Rangers is the right fielder, Ted Ford. A 235 average, 14 homers, and 50 RBIs. Royals are going to call the infield in. Hara, very good speed. He's got a very good chance to get to get home, even on an infield and grounder. Strategy, nothing on the 15. Nobody moves. Busby with the pitch. Busby, 3-3. Three, three. Against the righty, it's an out. And that is a ground ball to short. It's a grounder to short. The ball is hit to Freddie Potek. He's got it. Hell is going to go anyway. A base runner, 5, with the infield in becomes a 3. The throw to the plate, a 1-2-3 or a 6. Hara is safe. He is. And that will allow the runners to score, to move up a base. And that's one nothing Rangers. They decide to go to the plate and try to get the out, but they will fail. And that's going to be a single for, that's going to be a fielder's choice, but actually a single for Ford as the Rangers take a quick one nothing lead. Next batter is the left fielder. Dick Billings, a 254 average, five homers, and 58 RBIs. Rangers already lead 1-0. If Kansas City loses this game, uh, if they lose this game and the ball and Baltimore wins uh at least one of the doubleheader, the Royals, the, the Orioles still clinch the number three spot. So Ranger Royals have got to win. Strategy roll. Nothing on the 11. Billings, a 254 average, five homers, 58 RBIs. Busby, a 3 4. And he's not, that is a blank. He's not tired. Billings, 2 3. That's a power hit to left field. That's a 20, though. That's going to be way too high. It'll be a fly ball to left. And Sweet Lou Pinella will get to it. That's going to be out number two. Bittner got good speed, but hit the left field. It's already a minus three there. He will stay at second. Two outs, and now we'll see the catcher, Bill Fahey, a 168 average, a homer, and 10 RBIs in 72. I didn't think I'd actually be doing the Rangers. I think it's one of the first times in any replay that really two, a couple of days left in my season, and pretty much all the playoff teams have already been decided. Now we're just doing seeding. Strategy roll, and not, nothing happening there. Buzz B. A 1-5, strikeout, two, swing and a miss, struck him out. And that will retire the side. But the Rangers get on the board first, and they have a one nothing lead going into the bottom of the first. Brian B. yesterday said that this, Paul, that, uh, this pitcher stunk. 
I don't know how you say a pitcher with a 2-1-7 ERA stinks. Starting pitcher for the Texas Rangers is Mike Paul. Eight wins, nine losses, yeah, but a 2-1-7 ERA. 108 strikeouts and 40 walks in 72. He can start or relief, and he got the start today in, the, in this game here against the Royals. Leading off for Kansas City be the third baseman, Paul Shaw, a 228 average, six homers, and 41 RBIs. We, still, we will see the Royals again. They are in the postseason. Paul with the pitch. Paul with the pitch. Paul, 5-5, five, five, strikeout, 5, swing and a miss. Struck, actually, it's a called strike, 3, got him. That's a called strikeout on Paul. A lefty, 7, minus 2 is 5. That is a 5. That is a called strike, 3, and he is out of there. And one out. Yeah, I know. The Ranger minus one may have been deceptive. But remember, he also puts in other factors when he does a fast score. Next battle with the center fielder, Amos Otis. Can everybody agree that Amos Otis is, again, one of those main underrated players? Otis, a 293 average, 11 homers, and 54 RBIs. Paul with the pitch. 5-5, five, five, strikeout. 15 is high. Otis. 1-6. That's a power hit to right field. That is a 6. And against the lefty, it will be a base hit. Otis gets himself a single. He will hold it first. Infield double play. And now we'll see the right fielder, Richie Shinebloom. Another great baseball name. He had a great year in 72. 300 average, 8 homers, 66 RBIs in 72. One of the better players the Royals had that year. Strategy, nothing on the 16. Paul, 2-2, two, two, strikeout, 14 is high. Shine Bloom, 6-5, that's a ground ball, hit the first. 3-3-3, three, three, three. shortstop pivot, Hera, plus one, one to four. They got it, side retired. Shine Bloom hits into the 3-6-3 three, three double play. And that will end the inning. Uh, no runs and a hit. For the Royals, the Ring, the Rangers uh, lead one nothing as they scored one run on three hits in the top of the first. Game means nothing to Texas. They can do whatever they want, pretty much. Royals really got to win to still have a shot at getting the number three seed and avoid the wild card round. Top of the second. Leading off for the Rangers will be the shortstop, Jim Mason, a 197 average and 10 RBIs in 72. Busby, 5-1, strikeout, 15, that's going to miss. Mason, 5-5, five, five, that's grounded to third. That'll be handled by Paul Shaw, and he will toss it over for the out. Next up is the second baseman, Vic Harris, a 140 average and 10 RBIs in 72. As Clee Baseball fan joins us here at Municipal Stadium. Busby. 1-5. Strikeout 12. That's going to miss. Harris. A 5-2. That's fly to center field. And Amos Otis will come into that. Two down. And here comes the pitcher, Mike Paul. A 167 average and an RBI in 72. Yes, I know. The Rangers actually did a little better than they did. But, hey, my Mets were supposed to be 10 games over 500. They didn't even get there. The White Sox were 20 games over 500. They didn't get there. You're always going to have outliers every time you do a season. There's always going to be a few surprises. And that's good. Busby, 6-1, range play at the park. Municipal, 2-6, fly ball, center field. Once again, hit to Amos Otis. He was good. His range is a four, and he'll make the catch on the run and retire the side. So one, two, three, go the Rangers, and we will go to the bottom of the second. I mean, after all, if you don't, if you're not gonna, if you're gonna do a season replay and not get a few surprises, then we might as well not even do the season. Let's just take the six, the six teams in the year of of the, you know the the top three in each division and just put them together. What what what's the point? Let's play a season. Let's see what happens. You never know. Like, for instance, the Detroit Tigers won the American League East in 1972. They didn't even make the postseason this year. Bottom of the second. 
Leading off for the Royals will be the first baseman, John Mayberry. He had a good year. 298 average, 25 bombs, 100 RBIs. One of the better overall players in the uh, in baseball that year. Paul, 1-5. Home run chance. Lefty, 1-9. to nine, 15 is too high. Mayberry, 1-1. One, one. That's a line drive right to short. And Hera is right there to grab it. One out. Now we'll see the left fielder, Sweet Lou Pinella. 312 average, 11 homers, 72 RBIs. He had an excellent season in 72. Paul with the pitch. Paul, 4 2, strikeout, 19, no way. Pinella, 3 3, base hit. He'll hit that one past the second base. And Pinella's on, on first. Now the Rangers will set up the catcher. Carl Taylor, don't know much about him. 265 average, no homers, 11 RBIs in 72. Infield is a double play depth. Pinella had seven stolen bases. He'll stay there. And Taylor, nope, he'll swing. Paul, 5-2 against the righty, blank. Taylor, 2-3, and that's a fly out to center field. And Dave Nelson will backpedal a bit, but he'll got plenty of room for out number two. Here's the second baseman, Cookie Rojas, a 261 average, three homers, 53 RBIs. The Royals are in the postseason. The question is, are they going to be the three, four, or five seed? That'll be decided tonight and tomorrow. Strategy, nothing on the 12. Paul will pitch. Paul, 4-1. Wild pitch. Yep, that's behind the catcher, and Pinella will go to second. First wild pitch thrown by Paul. Reroll the strat, and he will stay where he is. And now Paul will pitch again. Paul, 6-3 against the righty, blank. Rojas, 6-1 against the lefty. That's a ground ball to third. That'll be handled up there by Jim Mason, and he's going to throw to first to get the out. And that will end the inning. No runs, a hit, and a wild pitch. But the Royals are down one nothing here after two. Heard Lou isn't doing very well. So did I. Yeah, I heard he's not doing it. And, of course, you know, Daryl Strawberry just survived a heart attack. It would really, I really hope he can, I, I would really be bad that the Mets are trying to retire his number and he may not make it to June 1st, but he says he's okay. They say he's okay. We go to the top of the third and the top of the order for the Rangers. Here's Dave Nelson, and he's 0 for 1. 1 nothing Rangers. A game the Royals really need to win in order to move in order to get into the into the division series round instead of the wild card. Busby, 2-5, strikeout. 14 is not happening. Nelson, 1-5. That's hit into left field. That's going to be a single. And Nelson will head to first. As Sports Time Machine, Utah Mike joins us here at Municipal Stadium. Trying to message me. Well, I haven't got I haven't gotten anything. If I did, I haven't heard the bell. Remember, go to my original uh use my original Facebook account. It's back, as I told you that guys it was reactivated when Facebook realized it wasn't doing anything wrong. Here's Hera. Hera's one for one. Infield is at double play. And that is a six. Nelson gets the steal sign. He's gonna go. Why not? 15 plus one is 16. Taylor, plus one is 17. On his way to second. Oh, possible error. Taylor has an error rating of a 16. And it just over the outstretched glove of Cookie Rojas. And Nelson's going to go to third. So that's going to be a stolen base and an E2 on Carl Taylor. That'll be the first error on the Royals. They did not have any errors in the game historically, and Nelson's on third. A bad throw by Carl Taylor, and it'll be a stolen base for Nelson, and he will make third. Now the infield will come in. So tonight is 86 Mets versus 1972. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to watch. I may have to catch it. Busby will pitch. Strategy roll. And that is a four. Nelson will stay where he is. Busby with the pitch. Busby, 3-3 three, three, against the righty. It's an automatic out. 
And that's going to be a fly ball to right field. And getting to that is Shine Bloom. That's out number one. Hera, sacrifice fly three. Nope. Nelson, base runner four. Shine Bloom, a zero arm, a one to four. Yeti will score. Two nothing Rangers. Stadium groans. Ugh. So that's going to be a sacrifice fly and allow the Rangers now to take a 2 nothing lead. And still only one out here in the top of the third. The batter now is Bittner. Bittner got a base hit his first time up. Bittner, they'll go ahead and wait for the pitch of Busby. Rangers lead 2 nothing here. Busby. 1-3, strikeout, 3, that'll get him. Swing and a miss, struck the out. That is the third K for Busby. Two down, and now here's Ford. Ford got a base hit his first time up. Busby, a 3-1, error on a throw. Ford, 3-1, that's a fly to left. And Blue Pinella will get to it. He'll make the catch and end the inning. One run, one hit. One error and a stolen base. But the Rangers now have a 2-0 lead going into the bottom of the third. Royals need to win pretty much. And if they lose, um, and actually if they lose, and Baltimore, if the Royals win, Baltimore needs to win both games in the doubleheader against Cleveland in order to clinch the three. If the Royals lose, uh, Baltimore just needs to win one because Baltimore does have the better board record. Leading off for the Royals with a shortstop, Freddie Patek, a 212 average, no homers, and 32 RBIs. Since I have all the seasons of the 70s, I'm thinking of picking all decade teams for each team and play a tournament. Now that sounds awesome. Who would you start for the Mets versus 72 A's? It's a three game series, one game, one game. What am I using? The 86 Mets? I got to start. You got to start with Good. You got to start with him. He was still the, he really was still the best pitcher uh, on that rotation in 86, even though, thanks to Mel Stottlemyre, he kind of ruined him. He's still the best pitcher I would go with. I would still go with Gooden. Paul will pitch to Patek. Paul, 1 1, double question mark. That nine is going to be a base hit right up the middle. So Patek will reach first. And the leadoff man is on for the Royals. And that will bring up the pitcher, Steve Busby. He does not have his own hitter card, so he'll use the 72 Kansas City pitcher's card, which has a 129 average and nine RBIs. Infield is a double play depth. We may see a bunt here. Strategy roll. And Potek does not get the steal sign. Um, does not get the steal sign. And Busby's gonna lay down the is gonna lay down the bunt. So we're going to see a bunt is on, Paul, and the corners will be in. 3-3, three, three, strikeout, 8, and it's going to be bunt. That's going to be swing and a miss, struck him out. That's going to be a, that's going to strike him out. That's going to strike him out as he fouls that one away, and that will be strikeout number two for Paul as he could not get the bunt. He bunts it foul. So one out now, and here comes Shaw. Shaw is 0 for 1. Patek on it first. Ron McGrath joins us here at Municipal Stadium. Strategy. This time, Patek gets the steal sign. He's going. 17 plus 1 is 18. Fahey minus 2, however, is 16. Patek on his way to second. The throw. And he'll make it. Get just under the tag. That'll be a stolen base for Patek. So first stolen base of the game for him. And that takes away a chance at a double play. Now Patek on at second base. Nothing on the strat this time. Royals need the game more than the Rangers do. Rangers are already out. Paul with the pitch. Paul, 5-4 at the park. Municipal, 6-5. And it's hit into right field in the deepest part of right field. And that's going to be a straight-up triple to right. Shaw will come into third. Patek will come around easily. He will score. It's two to one. Straight up triple for Paul Shaw.
And now the tying run is 90 feet away. The batter now is Otis. Otis is one for one. Infield is now going to play in. Shaw on at third base. Now a two to one ball game here. Strategy. Nothing on the 11. Paul will pitch. Paul, 1-3, blank. Otis, 5-5, five, five, base hit, right field. This game is tied. Shaw will walk on home, and we're tied at two. Stadium cheers. Yay! So the Rangers take a quick 2 nothing lead, and now the Royals have tied this up at 2. The batter now is Shine Bloom, and he's 0 for 1. Infield back to double play depth. Royals trying to win this game. They got to win, and then hope Baltimore loses at least a cup, loses, uh, loses the games here. Loses against the doubleheader against Cleveland. Strategy roll. That's a one. Otis gets the steal sign. He's going to go. 14 plus one is 15. The catcher, Fahey, minus two. Actually, I've already called it. A one to 13. He's safe at second base, and he is in a possible error. Throw made by Fahey. His error rating is a six. No. Nice play there. That's a nice play by the second baseman. Uh, Vic Harris to prevent that ball from going in the outfield, but it will be a stolen base for Otis. So now the go-ahead run in scoring position takes away the double play. And nothing on the five. Otis will stay where he is. Paul will pitch. Paul, 1-5. Home run chance, but the 11 is too high. Shine boom, 5-2. Base hit right up the middle. Right past Paul and into the outfield. Otis will come around from second. He will score. Royals lead it three to two. Stadium cheers. Yay. The Royals have opened it up here in the bottom of the third inning. A 3-2 lead here for the Royals. And now it's up to Mayberry who's up now. Infield back to double play depth. They go talk to Paul on the mound, see what's up. He says, I'm okay. So strategy roll here for Shine Bloom. He'll stay where he is. Paul, a 4-5. That's blank. He's not tired. Mayberry, 2-3. And that's a base hit into past the first baseman. And that'll be a single. Shine Bloom's got enough speed. He'll make third. So right now, Paul cannot keep him off the bases. Next batter is Pinella. Pinella's one for one. The Royals have five hits in this inning. And infield is now going to play in with runners at first and third. Strategy, nothing on the 16. Paul will pitch. Paul, 2-4, strikeout, 18 is high. Pinella, 1-5, and the base hits keep on coming. That is a single in the center. Shine Bloom will score. Mayberry, a base running rating of 1. Single to center, plus 1. A 1-2, one he'll make third. He will hold at second base as the throw comes in, and it is now 4-2 Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! Next up is Taylor. Rangers looking to maybe get some action in the bullpen. Like I said, this game's meaningless for the Rangers, but not for the Royals. Now the Royals have a 4-2 lead here, as right now Paul is just serving up base hits. Infield a double play, and nothing on the three. Paul will pitch. 4-3, strikeout three, swing and a miss. Struck him out. Third strikeout for Paul. And two away. And it will now bring up Rojas. Rojas is 0 for 1. Mayberry on at second. Pinella at first. They will stay there. Paul, 1-1. One, one. That's a double question mark. And that four is going to be a base hit right up the middle. Rojas sends a single past the pitcher. Mayberry will come around. He will score. Pinella. He will. He'll make third with two outs. Rojas on it first. It's five to two Royals. 
Stadium cheers! Yay! And the Royals have batted around. And it will bring up Patek. Patek started the game off with the, the inning off with a single, a stolen base, and scored. As the Royals have put a five spot here in the bottom of the third. Strategy roll. Nothing on the six. Pinella stays at third. Rojas stays at first. Paul will pitch to Patek. Paul, one, two. That's a blank. Patek. 3-1, and against the lefty that's hit into left field, and that's going to be a double. Pinella will score. Rojas, base runner three, becomes a four with two outs. Double the left, minus one. A one to three, Rojas will score, and he does. Rojas comes in to score. Patek goes to second. Two more runs in, seven to two Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! And that's it for Mike Paul. As that is it for him, he is done. As the Royals have completely destroyed him here in the bottom of the third inning. And the next batter is the pitcher, Steve Busby. He's going to bat. And the, Roy and the Rangers will go to the bullpen here. And I think they're going to bring in a pitcher that can pitch to get some innings. And so coming on to pitch for the Rangers is going to be Jim Panther. Five wins, nine losses, no saves. A 4-1-3 ERA. Panther will be the second Ranger pitcher as well. Brian B. was right. Mike Paul stunk. With a 2 one ERA, but he couldn't get the final out in this inning. Now a 7-2 game for the Royals. Panther will pitch to Busby. Strategy rolls are still on. And nothing happening on the two. Patek, well actually Patek gets the steal sign to go to third, but he'll stay right there. Panther will go ahead and pitch. Panther, 1-1. One, one. That's a double question mark, and that one is going to be a base hit right past the pitcher. Patek will now come in to score as Busby gets a single right up the middle. It's 8-2 to two Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! And Busby is bouncing up and down on first base. DH, I don't need no stinking DH. And now the batter is Shaw. Now 8-2 to two Royals. The Royals have put an 8 spot in the, a snowman in this inning. And they just can't get the final out. There's still two outs, by the way. Two outs. Both of them were strikeouts. Strategy rolls are still on. Strategy roll. Nothing on the 5. Busby's not going anywhere. Panther with the pitch. 2-3, strikeout one, swing and a miss, struck them out, and the inning is over. So the Royals are struck, the side of the Royals is struck out. But what an inning. Eight runs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits, a stolen base. Dang, what an inning. And the Royals hang a snowman in the third inning. It's 8-2, to two, Kansas City. As Jimmy Jam, and my name is Mutt, joins us here at Municipal Stadium. We go to the top of the fourth, 8-2 to two Royals. Busby now has a six-run lead to work with. Dick Billings leads off for the Lone Stars, and he is 0 for 1. 8 to 2 Royals. What a great inning there for Kansas City, who's trying to get the three seed. Busby, 2 6 at the park. Municipal, 5 6. That's flied to right field, and Shine Bloom will get to it and make the catch for the out. Next batter is Fahey. Fahey is 0 for 1. Busby. 4-2, strikeout two, swing and a miss, struck him out. Fourth K for Busby, two away. Mason is next. 
He's out for one. Busby and total command here with a six-run lead, but we all know that no lead is safe at inside pitch. Just ask my Mets. Busby, 5-1, strikeout, 14, cold strike three on Mason. He's out of there, and the inning is over. Fifth K for Busby, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for the Rangers, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Just ask my Mets if a lead is safe and inside pitch. Amos Otis leads off for the Royals. He is two for two. He's got two singles. Panther, uh, let's see. He can pitch to five more before tiring. Panther will stay out there. Panther, 2-4 against the righty. Strikeout, 13 is high. Otis, 3-5, and that's grounded to second base. And that will be Harris. Getting to that, Vic Harris tosses it over for the out. Shine Bloom is next. He's one for two with a single. Panther, a 2-6 range play. Shine Bloom, 2-5. That's a ground ball to first base. That ball is hit to Larry Bittner. He was pretty good. His range is a four. And he's got it. Nice play near the line. Panther will come on over, and that'll be a nice play there for Bittner. He'll throw it to Panther for the out, and that will be the second out of the inning. Nice play by Larry Bittner. And now here's Mayberry, and he's and he's one for two. Panther with the pitch. Panther, 4-6. That is a blank. Mayberry, 5-2, and against the righty, Mayberry is going to hit a double into center field. That's a two-out, two-bagger, and he will hold it second. It'll bring up Pinella. Pinella's two for two with two singles. Doug Hunt joins us here at Municipal Stadium. Mayberry on at second. Strategy rolls are still on. Nothing on the 15. Panther will pitch. Panther, 1-4, against the righty, strikeout, 13 is high. Pinella, 1-4, and Pinella's going to get another one, and that's going to be a double into left field. Mayberry will come around third. He will score. It's 9-2 to two Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! Pinella now 3-3. Three for three. Batter now is Taylor. Taylor is 0 for 2. Panther will stay out there. But now a 9 to 2 lead for the Royals. In a game they got shut out historically, 3 to nothing. Strategy rolls are now off. Panther, 4 3 against the righty. It's a blank. Taylor, 4 6. And that is a base hit right up the middle, past the pitcher, and into the outfield. Pinella will come around. He will score. Taylor holds it first. It's 10 to 2, Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! And the Royals are putting on a hitting clinic tonight. You think maybe they're trying to make a statement for the rest of the American League saying, we're not going to be so easy to beat. The batter now is Rojas. Rojas is one for two. Taylor on at first base. Now a 10 to two game here. Panther with the pitch. 4-6, that's a blank. Rojas, 1-5, and that is a fly ball to left. And getting to that will be Billings. Billings will make the catch and end the inning. Two runs, three hits for the Royals, and after four, they've got a 10-2 lead. We go to the top of the fifth inning. A 10-2 lead here for the Royals over the over the Rangers. Vic Harris is the leadoff batter. He is 0 for 1. 
Ten to two here, top of the fifth inning. And it looks like we're going to have a blowout tonight as Marlon Price joins us here at Municipal Stadium. The fans here at Municipal Stadium, they are enjoying what they're seeing, but they're also scoreboard watching to see what the Orioles do. Busby with the pitch. Busby, 4-3. That's a pitcher result. The 7 against the switch left. That's going to be an out. And it will be a fly to center field. And Amos Otis will get to it and put it away, out number one. Pinch hitter coming in for Jim Panther. He will come out. Rangers will go to the bench. And it is going to be Joe Lovito, a 224 average, a homer, and 19 RBIs in 72. Busby will pitch. Busby, 2-6. That's at the park. Municipal Stadium, 1-6. And that is a double into left field. So Lovito hits one into left. And that gets a runner on second base for the Rangers. They got a long way to go, though. Here comes Nelson. And Nelson's one for two. Singled. Stole a base and scored. Strategy rolls are off. Busby will pitch. Busby, one, three, strikeout six. Got him. Struck him out. And that is a 6K for Busby. And out number two. And here comes Hera. Hera, one for two, a single and a sacrifice fly. Levito on it, second. Fans here at Municipal Stadium enjoying the score, but they are watching the scoreboard between the Orioles and the Indians. Busby, four, five against the righty. That's an automatic. Out! And it's a fly to right. And Shinebloom's going to get to it. He'll make the catch and end the inning. No runs and a hit for the Rangers. And we will go. To the bottom of the fifth. Orioles have a double header against the Indians. Rangers win. I'm oh, sorry, Royals win. The Orioles have to win both games to clinch. Royals lose. The Orioles have the Orioles have to only win one game to clinch the number three seed. Freddie Patek leads off for the Royals. He is two for two, a single and a double. Need a pitcher for from the Rangers, and it is going to be. They are going to go with. Hmm. I don't want to bring out the closer. I think they'll go with a righty. Coming on to pitch for the Rangers is going to be Bill Gogolowski. Four wins, 11 losses, two saves, a 4-2-5 ERA. Starter and a, starter and a reliever. Gogolowski, another – Bill Gogolowski, another great baseball name. He will be the third Ranger pitcher. Freddie Patek will lead off. He's two for two. Bottom of the fifth, Royals have a 10-2 lead. Gogolowski, 3-2, walk, 6, ball 4. Easily done. As usual, every time I bring in a reliever, the first thing he does is walk the batter. So Patek will trot the first. Busby is going to come up to bat. They'll probably bring on, but he's going to swing away, though, because, of course, strategy rolls are allowed, so we're not going to see a bunt. He'll swing away, and you're not going to take him out with an eight-run lead. Gogolowski will pitch, and of course, Busby using the Kansas City pitcher's card. Gogolowski, 3-4, range play. Busby, 1-5. It's a ground ball to short. Ground ball to short. The ball is hit to Toby Hara. He wasn't that good in 72. He's a 2, but a double play depth, he's a 1. That's going to be a base hit for Busby, his second hit of the game. Will Patek make third? The answer is no. He will hold at second base. And Steve Busby has his second hit of the ball game. DH, I don't need no stinking DH. Busby now two for three with two singles. And the Royals are just hitting everything. And here comes Shaw. Shaw is one for three. Uh, every batter in the lineup has gotten a hit for the Royals. In this ball game, Gogolowski will pitch to Shaw. Gogolowski, 6-3, error on a grounder. 
Shaw, one, two. That is a ground ball, but it's a ground ball back to Gogolowski. His error rating is a zero, so there won't be an error there. So three, two, two. Shaw, the righty, so second base is pivot. And that is Harris, and he's a minus one. So the only way the turn up will play is on a one. Nope. Patek will go to third, and that is a four. Pip and uh, Busby thrown out at second. Shaw will make first, and that is one out. Patek to third. He's out of there. It's a fielder's choice. Batter now is Otis, and the Rangers are going to call the infield in, still try to play the game of win here, even though they're down by eight runs here in the bottom of inning five. Gogolowski, 3-6, that's a blank. Otis, 2-5, that's a fly to left field. That's going to be caught by Billings for out number two. Otis, a sacrifice fly of two. He'll bring in Patek. He'll score. It's 11-2 to Royals. And right now the fans here in Kansas City are just watching a relaxing game of domination baseball. It is now 11-2 to Royals off the sacrifice fly. The batter now is Shinebloom with two outs. Royals in total command here of the game. Gogolowski, the, the Rangers got spotted two runs, and then Kansas City just opened up a can of whoop. Gogolowski, 2-1. That's at the park. Municipal Stadium, 4-1, and it's still going on. That's a base hit into center field. It's a single. Shaw, base runner, two. Single to center, plus one. A one to three. Shaw will still get to third, and he will. Shinebloom thinking about second base. A one to two. He'll get there. He'll back off and go back to first. Single for Shinebloom. And now the batter is Mayberry. And no matter who comes up to pitch for the Rangers, the Royals are just destroying everybody. Do I know the season high on the board for 1972? I think I think 15 or 16. I don't remember offhand. But I have not, we have not had many blowouts in the 72 season. They have mostly really been low scoring games. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth. Royals now lead 11 to 2 as they're just all over the Rangers in this game. Gogolowski, 2 1. That's at the park. Municipal Stadium, 5 3. And that is a base hit to left field. Shaw will come in to score. Shine Bloom base runner two. Single to left with two outs becomes a three. Minus two is one. He won't get there. He'll hold at second base. And right now it's just becoming a simple route as the Royals are just pounding the poor Rangers into submission. It's now 12 to two. Stadium cheers. Yay! That'll be it for Gogolowski. Rangers have seen enough. And they'll bring on another pitcher. And coming on to pitch for the Rangers is going to be Jim Rowland. It really doesn't matter who's on the mound these days. Jim Rowland started the season with the New York Yankees. He is on the Rangers. No wins, a loss, no saves, a 5 2 8 ERA. Rowland just coming in there just to try to get an out. And here comes Pinella. Pinella's three for three, two singles and a double. Still two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Now a 12 to two Royals lead. Shine Boom on it second. Maybird, Mayberry, uh, May, Mayberry on it first. And here comes the pitch. Roland, five, six. That is a walk plus 10. But believe it or not, the 18 is too high. Pinella, one, five. It don't matter. Base hit, center field. It's a single. Shine Bloom, base runner three with two outs. Single to center, plus four. There's not going to be a throw home. Shine Bloom will score. Mayberry, a base runner two with two outs. Single to center, 
plus one. A one to three. Mayberry will make third, and he will. Pinella has a chance to make second. A one to three. He does, and he does. It's a double. Stadium cheers. Yay! Pinella is four for four, two singles and two doubles. It is now 13 to two. And I was not expecting a game like this tonight. Sports Sign Machine says tilt. 13 to two Royals. The batter now is Taylor. And Taylor is one for three. Royals trying to make a statement here, saying we're not going to be so easy to kick out in the postseason, whether we have to play a one-game playoff or we make the division series. Roland will pitch to Taylor. Roland, 6-3. Against the righty, it's a walk plus 10, and Taylor will get to first no matter what height, no matter what is happening. The Rangers just cannot get anything. And now the batter is Rojas, and for the second time in the ball game, the Royals have sent nine to the plate. Rojas is one for three. Mayberry on it third, Pinella on it second, Taylor on it first. It's a 13 to two game here, in a meaningless game for the Rangers, but not for the Royals. They're piling it on. Well, let's see what happens here. Roll in with the pitch. Roland, 1-5 against the righty. It's a blank. Rojas, 3-1. It's still coming and going on here. 3-1 is going to be a double into center field. Mayberry will score. Pinella will score. Taylor, base runner four with two outs. Double to center, plus three. That's going to make him a six. He's going to score. Rojas on it. Second base. It's a three-run double for Rojas at 16-2. Stadium cheers. Yay! And here comes, and here comes Patek. Patek, they batted around twice in this game. Uh, he is two for two, a single, a double, and a walk. Rojas on at second base. Royals have a 16 to two lead here. Definitely, I believe, the highest scoring run, most runs by any team here in the 72 season I've done. Rolling with the pitch. 6-5. Error on a grounder. Patek. 5-1. Nope. That's a line drive to second base. It's caught by Vic Harris. And this inning mercifully is over. So let's see here. Six runs on one, two, three, four hits. Walk, two walks a and a sacrifice fly. Actually, I'm sorry. Five hits. Six runs on five hits. And the Royals have a 16-2 to two lead here after five. It's almost like playing, it's almost like playing MLB. It's almost like playing MLB the show on rookie level. Something that Steeler fan has to do when he plays his Astros. He has to play, he has to play MLB the show on he. He has to he has to play MLB the show on rookie level in order for him to win his games as playing the Astros. Of course, he's not in the chat, so he can't uh, he can't uh, you know defend himself on that. Game of the year candidate, uh, I will say so because of the offensive explosion. <laughs> as Vida Productions and Hialai Heyday join us here at Municipal Stadium. Top of the six, 16 to two Royals. And the Rangers right now just want to go home. Here's Larry Bittner. He'll lead off the top of the sixth. Busby, 5 2 against the lefty. It's a blank. Bittner, 1 2. That's a power hit to left field. That's a one against the righty. It's a single. Here come the Rangers. A base hit by Bittner. A leadoff single, and now the Rangers are looking to go ahead and make a rally. Here comes Ford, 
Ford is one for two. Infield double play. Strategy rolls are off. Busby, 2-1 against the righty. That's an automatic out. And it's a fly out to center field. And Amos Otis will come on and get to it and make the play. One down. Here comes Billings. Billings is 0 for 2. Bittner on it first. Busby, 4-2. Strikeout 2. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Seven strikeouts for Busby tonight. He's got a he's got a two touchdown lead, so I don't see him I don't see him yanking anybody being yanked. Here comes Fahey. Fahey is 0 for 2. Busby will pitch. 3-3 three, three against the lefty blank. Fahey, 5-6, and that's a ground out to third base. That'll get picked up by Shaw. He's gonna throw to second to get Fahey, and the inning is over. No runs and a hit for the Rangers as they are getting absolutely plastered tonight. 16 to 2. Going in the bottom of the sixth. New pitcher coming out for the Rangers. Right now, the Rangers are thinking this game is over, so they're just going to try to get some innings in for some people. And let's see what's going to be. And I guess it really doesn't matter now. Coming on to pitch for the Rangers will actually be their, one of their better pitchers. It'll be Paul Lindblad. Five wins, eight losses, nine saves, a 2 6 2 ERA. Lindblad will be the fifth Ranger pitcher. Steve Busby will lead off, and he will. He'll use the Kansas City pitcher's card. He's two for three tonight, so why would you not let Busby hit? Bottom of the six, 16 to two Royals. Lindblad, 1-3, blank. Busby, 3-6. That's grounded to short. And that'll get taken care of there by Hera. And he'll toss it over for the out. Next batter is Shaw. Shaw is 1-4. for four. He did get a triple. Lindblad with the pitch. Lindblad, 4-3 against the righty. It's a blank. Shaw, 6-5, base hit, right pass short, and they're still hitting the ball. Single for Shaw, that's his second hit of the game. And the batter now is Otis. Otis is 2-4 for four with two singles and a stolen base. Could you share on the Facebook group? Go right ahead. The Facebook group is for any, anything related to baseball. So 16-2, to two, but Shaw is now on at first base. Lynn Blad. 3-4, hit by pitch. Eight, nope, that's high. Otis, 1-4, one, one, and that is a ground ball to first. Can they turn the double play? 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Shortstop, pivot, Hara, plus one, one to four. They got it, side retired. 3-6-3, three, three, double play, no runs and a hit for the, Ranger, for the Royals. As Lindblad actually keeps the Royals from scoring. After six, it's still 16 to two. Top of the seventh, Busby's got plenty in the tank. Jim Mason will bat for the Rangers, even though his lousy average, but down 14 runs, I think the Rangers are just throwing the towel here and just let Mason hit. Busby will go ahead and he will pitch. Busby, 4-2, strikeout, 5, swing and a miss, struck him out. And that is the 8th strikeout for Busby, 1 down. Next batter is Harris. Harris is 0-2. Rangers got out to a 2-0 lead, and then the Royals have now scored 16 unanswered. Busby, 1-2, hit by pitch, 7 is high. Harris. 4-5, and against the righty, that's a ground out to third base. That'll get taken care of by, that'll get taken care of by Shaw, and that will be out number two. Pinch hitter coming in for Paul Lindblad. He'll leave the game. Rangers are just going to go ahead and bring in a pinch hitter just to try something. And coming on to pinch hit for the Rangers, 
will be Lenny Randall, a 193 average, two homers, and 21 RBIs. So Busby will now pitch to Randall with two outs here in the top of the seven. Busby, one, two, hit by pitch, six. That is high. Randall, one, five, and that's flied to right field. And Shinebloom says he'll get it. He will make the catch and retire the side. Busby has pitched an absolute beautiful game, really. But when you got a two-touchdown lead, I guess it's pretty easy. We are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing, take me out to the ball game. I'll be right back. We still have a very important 10-minute ticker coming up for the Royals, depending on how things are going. This game could be for not if the Orioles still win both their games against the Indians. But it's a 16-2 lead as we go to the bottom of the seven. And leading off for the Royals is going to be Richie Shinebloom. And he is two for four with two singles. Rangers need a pitcher. And they're going to go with Horacio Pena. Two wins, seven losses, 15 saves, a 3-2-0 ERA. Pena is the sixth Ranger pitcher. So 16-2 here, bottom of the seventh. In an absolute shellacking, the Royals are giving the Rangers. Pena with the pitch. 5-5. Five, five. Against the switch left, that is a walk plus 10, and that is ball four. So Shine Boom, there we go, another walk. You bring in a new pitcher, and the first thing he does is walk the batter, and Shine Bloom goes to first. It always seems to be, I always walk the leadoff batter. Here comes Mayberry. Mayberry is three for four. Two singles and a double. Infield is at double play depth. Shine Bloom on it first. Pena, he will go ahead and he'll pitch. Pena, 1 6, strikeout. 18 is high. Mayberry, 1 5. That's fly to center field. And Dave Nelson's going to get to it and he'll put it away for the out. Here comes Sweet Lou. Pinella's having a great night. He's four for four. Two singles and two doubles. He's having a very, he's having an excellent night. Shine Bloom on it first. Pena, 6-1, range play. Pinella, 6-5. That's a base hit past third, but it's a range play for, for Jim Mason. They're at double play depth. His range is a one. He won't get it. It'll be a single. Shine Bloom will have to hold at second base, though. And Pinella gets to first. And it's a base hit. And Pinella's now five for five. What a night for him. And here comes Taylor. Taylor is one for four. He's got a single. Doesn't matter who's on the mound. Royals are just hitting the Rangers up here. Shine Bloom on second. Pinella on it first. 16 to 2 KC. Pena. 2-3, hit by pitch. Three, yep, plunk, ouch. There you go. He goes ahead and hits Taylor, and now the bases are loaded. So there's your hit batter. And that is the first hit by pitch of the game. And now with the bases loaded, here comes Rojas. Rojas is two for four, a single and a double. No, not yet. No brawl. Single and a double. They're going to call the infield a double play depth. 
Rangers just want to get this game pretty much over with. But right now, the Royals are just trying to make a, make a statement. Pena will go ahead and he will pitch. 6-1. Range play. Rojas. 5-4. It's a base hit pass short. That's Toby Hara. His range is a two, but a double play dip. It's a one. And that's a base hit. Shine Bloom will come in to score. Pinella. Let's see. Pass short. Yes, he will come in to score. Taylor will hold at second base. Rojas holds it first. 18 to 2 Royals. Stadium cheers. Yay! Rojas is now three for five. That'll be it for Pena as they can't do anything with him. And the Ranger, actually, you know what? He's tired. He is tired. Nah, they'll get him out. And the Rangers are just going to start bringing in their pitchers to see who can get a stop. Coming into pitch now for the Rangers will be Steve Lawson. No wins, no loss, a save, a 2 8 1 ERA. Lawson is now going to be the seventh Ranger pitcher. And it is now 18 to 2 in favor of the Royals. And still only one out in the bottom of the seventh. Lawson with the pitch. Lawson, 4-1. That is a blank. And of course, uh, who's he who's hitting? I guess that's gonna be I guess he threw a pitch to nobody. Here's Patek. Patek is two for three. A single, a double, and uh, a walk. That was a 4-1. We'll leave it as a blank. Patek will, will run up there to the plate and swing. 2-1, and he's going to ground ball at the third. And that is going to be that is going to be towards the line of double play. It'll be a 5-3. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So there's not going to be a double play. Question is, is who's out? That is a 2 and... Carl Taylor will make it to third. He beats the roll. So the throw goes to first to get Patek, and that's going to be out number two. Rojas will make the second base. So a ground ball to third. They don't turn the double play, but they throw to first to get the out, two down. And that will bring up the pitcher, Steve Busby. And he can't believe he's been he's up. He is about to make his fifth at bat, and he's going to go ahead and uh, get what's the most runs scored? 22, I think, is the most ever by one team. But I did have a 16 to 13 game one time. That was that crazy division uh, division series game uh, between the Expos and the Cardinals in 1985. Check that out. Taylor on at third, Rojas on at second. Lawson will pitch to Busby. He will use the Kansas City pitcher's card. Lawson, 4-1. That's blank. Busby, 6-6. Six, six. That's grounded to first base. That'll get taken care of by Bittner. He'll take it himself and end the inning. Two runs, two hits, a walk, and a hit batter. And the Royals now have an 18-2 lead on the Rangers. In absolute, in an absolute spanking of a baseball club. We go to the top of the eighth. Busby, he can still pitch to four batters before he tires. Dave Nelson will come up for the Rangers. He's one for three. 18 to 2 here. What a destruction. Busby, 2 1 against the righty. It's an out. And that's a fly ball to right field. Shine Bloom will come under it and grab it. One down. Next up is Hara. Hara's 1 for 3. Busby, he'll go ahead and pitch. Busby, 3 2. Home run chance. Righty, though. Hara. Is a zero. It's not happening. Hara, a 4-4. Four, four. He will hit a base hit right past the pitcher and into the outfield. So the Rangers do get a single. 
Hera hits his second hit of the game as Brian Hoxie joins us here at Municipal Stadium. Next up is Bittner. Bittner is two for three, two singles. Infield a double play. 18 to two Royals, totally destroying the Lone Stars. Busby, 1-1 one, one against the lefty. It's a blank. Bittner, 4-3. That is a fly to right, and Scheinblum says he'll get it, and he'll make the catch for out number two. And now Ford. Ford is one for three. Fans here at Municipal Stadium just enjoying the destruction. Busby, 3-1. Error on a throw. Ford, 5-1. That's a power hit to left field. That's a six. And against the righty, it's going to be a double. It's going to be a double in the right field. In the, into, uh, actually, in the left field. That's going to be a double to left field. So, Hara base running with two outs. His base runner is a six. Double the right minus one. Uh, they're gonna try. Usually, I know I got the, the six the six run rule, but on a one to five, he's safe, and he is. He is. Now the question is: Was there an error on the throw? The throw it was hit the left field, and that was Billings. Billings error rating is a ten. He will not make an error. Now Ford, that was a double, so and that was a one. So for the base running rating of three, he'll take third, and he will. So Ford goes to third base. He'll turn that into a triple, and the Rangers finally get a run. Stadium gives a sarcastic cheer. Yay. It's now 18-3, to three. and they gave a sarcastic cheer to them. It's now 18-3 to three as Ford comes through with a triple. In the left field, the batter now is Billings. Busby is now tired. They're going to let him pitch until his arm falls off. So 18-3. to three. Ford on his third. Busby with the pitch. Busby, 1-4. Possible error. Billings, 6-3. That's a fly ball to center field. Going after that is Amos Otis. His error rating is a 2. That's a five. He'll make the catch, and that will end the inning on the flyout. One run on two hits for the Rangers, and they're down 18-3 to three as the Royals have put up six field goals. We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Royals holding on to an 18-3 lead. And I got to add an extra column to the scoreboard here, to the scorecard. So the leader, leadoff batter for the Royals is Paul Shaw. And Steve Lawson's going to come out of the game. Rangers will go to the bullpen and bring in a fresh pitcher. And coming on to pitch for the Rangers is going to be Pete Broberg. Five wins, 12 losses, a save, a 4-2-9 ERA. Pete Broberg is now the eighth Ranger pitcher. Shaw will lead off here at the bottom of the eighth as the Royals have an 18-3 lead. Broberg, 1-4, strikeout nine. That will miss. Shaw... 4-2, and that's ground out to first base. Bittner will go ahead and get it, and that will be out number one. Finally, a new pitcher, and you don't walk the leadoff batter. Here comes Otis. Otis is two for five. He's got two singles. Broberg with the pitch. Broberg, 6-3, strikeout. 19 is high. Otis, 3-6. That's flying to left field, and getting under that is Dick Billings. He'll make the catch for the out. And now here's Shinebloom. Shinebloom is two for four, two singles and a walk. Broberg coming in, trying to have a pretty decent inning here against the Royals. Broberg, 1-5, blank. Shinebloom, 1-3. That's a power hit to right field. That's an 18. But against the righty, that's going to be way out of there. 
And a fly ball to right, and Ted Ford's going to get it. He will make the catch and retire the side. And that is the first time in the ball game the Kansas City Royals are sent down in order. They've gotten a hit in every inning except the eighth. 18-3 to three after eight. But will we see a ninth inning miracle? Top of the ninth, Royals lead 18 to 3. Steve Busby's tired. He says, let me finish this game out. So he's going to try to do just that. The Rangers have had enough, and they're just going to let they're going to let him bat. So here comes Bill Fahey. He'll lead off. Fahey is 0 for 3. The Rangers said, forget this. Busby with the pitch. 2-1. Against the lefty. Walk. The 19 is high. Fahey. 6-3. It's a power hit to left field. That's a 9. And that's going to be a leadoff double by Bill Fahey. So the Rangers get a leadoff double. Will this be the rally? Fahey's at second base. The batter now is Mason, and maybe the Rangers might just bring some players on the bench. Let's see. Mason is what? He is the third baseman. And But the bench is just – the bench is horrible, though. The bench is bad. The bench is bad. Mason's going to bat. Fahey on at second. Busby will pitch to Mason. Busby. 4-4, four, four, strikeout, six, swing and a miss, struck him out. That's out number one. And now the batter is Harris. Fahey on at second base. Busby is tired. He's trying to go the distance. Busby, 6-3, strikeout, 10. Cold strike, three on Harris. He got him. And that is strikeout number 10 for Busby. And we'll see a pinch hitter for Broberg as the Rangers will go to the bench and bring out probably the best batter they got on the bench. And believe it or not, it's Tom Grieve. 204 average, three homers, 11 RBIs. Tom Grieve will pinch hit for the pitcher. And Busby trying to go the distance. Runner at second base. Two men down, top of the ninth. Royals lead 18-3. to three. The fans here at Municipal Stadium are already watching the scoreboard. They know the Royals pretty much got this in hand. Busby will pitch. 2-3. Range play. Maybe not. Grieve. 1-4 against the righty. It's a ground ball to short. Going after it is Freddie Patek. His range is a four. He's got it. Place play by Patek. He gets up. Pumps once, pumps twice, throws to first. That's your game, mercifully. The Royals go ahead and take the Rangers behind the woodshed, 18-3. to Stadium cheers. Yay! No runs and a hit for the Rangers as they're just going to go right back into the clubhouse and not even look at the scoreboard. As the Kansas City Royals give the Rangers a complete beatdown. And I think that is the biggest beatdown I've had here in the 72 replay. It's a big win for the Royals. But now they need the Orioles to lose at least one game against the Indians in 10-minute ticker. But first, we have a final line score coming up. For the Royals, 18 hits, I'm sorry, 18 runs, 22 hits, one error. For the Rangers, three runs, nine hits, and no errors. The winning pitcher is Steve Busby. He goes the distance, and it couldn't be, and it couldn't have made it any easier for him. 
Mike Paul will take the loss, and that's pretty much it. The Rangers, historically in this game, got three runs on eight hits and an error. In this game, they got three runs and nine hits and no errors, but the Royals got 18 hits, 20, 18 runs, 22 hits and an error, where the Royals historically got no runs and eight hits. Wow. That is what you call being taken behind the woodshed. We have a very, we still have a big 10 minute ticker coming right up. Don't go away. Wow. What a, what destruction that was. I didn't see that coming. I expected a much better game, but woof. all right. Well, sometimes you get a game like that. It does happen in real life. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball. Only two days left in the 72 regular season. The postseason is right around the corner. So the Rangers, the Royals get an 18-3 beatdown, and that's not even possible in 10-minute ticker. The most runs you can get is 15, oh, is 15 in the 10-minute ticker, so that's not even possible. So, let's first do the games that don't mean anything. Oakland and California. Athletics, 11-21, and that is two. Angels, minus 115-0, another win for the A's. Uh, Boston at Detroit, that game is meaningless. Red Sox, 7-25, and that is two. Tigers, 665, that is seven, and the Tigers will get a win. White Sox and the Twins. White Sox, 863, and that's six. Twins, 1556, and that's seven, a win for the Twin Cities. Dodgers and the Braves. Dodgers, 635, and that is three. Braves, I'm sorry, 935. I'm going to do a 935. That's still three. And Braves, 642. And that is also three. They will go to extras. As D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, joins us here for Fast Score Baseball. As D. Scott Howard just missed the beatdown. Uh, let's see here. Dodgers roll at Los Angeles 2 plus 0. Atlanta 5 plus 2 is 7. That will be a win for the Braves. Philadelphia and the Cubs. Philly 17-23, and that is 3. Cubs 5-53, and that is 4. And that's a win for the Cubs. Astros and the Reds, meaningless. Astros, 9-62, that is 6. Red, 16-33, and that is 4. That's a win for the Strohs. Mets and the Expos, doubleheader, meaningless. Game 1, Mets, 13-34, and that is 4. Expos, 5-33, that's 2. I'll get one happy recap. Mets, 7-53, and that is 4 again. Expos 10-31, and that is three, and the Mets will win both games. Yay! Cardinals and the Pirates. Cardinals 7-26, and that is two. That is two. Pirates 16-55, and that's seven, and that is a win for the Bucks. Padres and the Giants. Padres won. 56, that is 3. Giants, 18-54, that is 7. And that's a win for the G-Men. Now, the two games that mean something. The Baltimore Orioles and the Cleveland Indians have a... The Baltimore and Cleveland, a doubleheader. The Brewers and the Yankees play a game, too. That game does mean something as well. As now the Royals now have a game-and-a-half lead on the Yankees for the number four seed to see who will host the wild card game if the number three seed belongs to Baltimore. So Kansas City is now 82 and 71. The Yankees are 81 and 72. 
And Kansas City now is three and two on the board, where the Yankees are four and three on the board. We're going to do the Yankees and the Brewers first. We're going to do the Yankees and the Brewers first. If the Yankees lose this game, if the Yankees lose this game, uh, can they still get Kansas City? Uh, let's see. They did 82 and 71. The Yankees would go to 82 and 73. No. So if the Yankees lose this game to Milwaukee, uh, Kansas City does wrap up at least the four. And the Yankees will have to go on the road for the wild card. So what will happen here? Milwaukee and the Yankees. It's Skip Lockwood for the Brewers and Mel Stoudemire for the Yankees. This is a big game here to decide who go to decide if the Yankees still have a chance to host the wild card game. Only one wild card game coming up in this postseason. Very strange, but that's what we got. Skip Lockwood for the Brewers. Stoudemire for the Yankees. This is for the wild card. This is for a chance at the four seed. Do the Yankees, do they still hold on? Brewers, 6, 42, and that is three. Yankees, 10, 36, and that is three. We go to extras. Milwaukee has a plus zero, and the Yankees have a minus two. The Yankees have a minus two in the clutch. Milwaukee's a zero. So what happens here in extra innings? Do the Yankees still have a chance to host the wild card game? Brewers roll. Milwaukee rolls a two. And that stays at two. Yankees roll a five. Minus two is three. The Yankees will win in extras. So the Yankees now go to 82 and 72, and the Royals now at 82 and 71, and it's still the better winning percentage for Kansas City. So now Kansas City did not quit. The four is still up for grabs, but now we go to Baltimore and the Indians. Baltimore is at Cleveland. Baltimore, the Kansas City Royals won both games. Well, sorry, Royal. If Baltimore wins both games, they are the three seed. They go to 83 and 71 because they have the better board record of four and two over Kansas City's three and two. So now let's see. Baltimore, can they clinch the number three seed? Game one is Doyle Alexander versus Dick Tidro. Royals fans are hoping Baltimore loses both. Let's see what happens. Baltimore, 7-42, and that is three. Indians, 3-51, and that is also three. We go to extras. Baltimore is a minus four clutch, though. Cleveland is a zero. Not good for the Orioles in the clutch. So let's see what happens in extras. Baltimore rolls a one, minus four is negative three. Cleveland rolls a five, plus zero. And the Indians win game one. Now that means Baltimore is now 81 and 72. And Kansas City is 82 and 71. Now Baltimore is behind Kansas City. Now the Orioles have to win the second game, or Kansas City can win the three seed with a win tomorrow. Baltimore at Cleveland, game number two. Baltimore, 9-55, and that is five. Indians, 1-62, and that is four. They will split it. So now Baltimore is now 82 and 72. Kansas City is 82 and 71. And I think Kansas City just overtook the Orioles with that victory. I'll have to look at it. I think they did. But they could still lose tomorrow. I'll have to look. But the number three seed has not been clinched. That is your 10 minute ticker if your team won tonight. Congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. Now we got to choose a game for tomorrow. 
Uh, Texas takes on Kansas City again. Don Stanhouse against Roger Nelson. The Brewers take on the Yankees. Jim Lonborg against Larry Goel. And the Orioles do not play. So let me double check and make sure the standings and see where they sit here real fast. So Baltimore, let's see here. Let's make sure. Baltimore just went to 82 and 72. Kansas City is now 82 and 71 with their victory. So Baltimore doesn't play any more games. So did Kansas City clinch? Did they just clinch the three? Let me make sure about that. Hold on. I'm not 100% sure. 82, 82 divided into 153 is 0.536. Baltimore, 82 divided by into 154 is 0.532. So Kansas City has the bet Kansas City has the better record at this moment at 82 and 71. The Yankees of course are also 82 and 72 with their victory. Let's check a look at that real fast. So they're also at .532. So right now, Kansas City at this moment has the three. Baltimore and the Yankees are tied, but Baltimore has the better board record at four and two, and the Yankees are four and three. So that means right now Baltimore is the four, and the Yankees are the five. So losing one game to Cleveland really hurt the Orioles. So they slipped into the four, but Kansas City, however... If they lose tomorrow, they go to 82 and 72. It's a it would be a three-way tie. And of course, the Yankees still have a chance because the Yankees play the Brewers tomorrow. And if they win, they go to 83 and 72, and they would get the three seed. We have one more day to play to decide to see who will be the three seed and avoid the wild card series. Baltimore can still get the three. Because Baltimore has the better board record. So Kansas City is now three and two, and the Yankees are four and three. If Kansas City wins tomorrow, they will clinch the three seed over the Orioles because the Orioles don't play tomorrow. And even if Kansas City and if Kansas City wins and the Yankee win, the Yankees would have the same would have the same would still not catch Kansas City. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I think we do the Rangers and the Royals again. Don Stanhouse against Roger Nelson. Kansas City wins. They get into the three seed. And Baltimore and the Yankees will wind up in the four and the five. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow night, closing day of the 1972 season. Once again, the Texas Rangers versus the Kansas City Royals. It'll be Don Stanhouse for the Rangers and Roger Nelson for the Royals. This is for the number three seed. Kansas City wins. They clinch it. Otherwise, 10-minute ticker will decide what happens with the Brewers and the Yankees. That'll be tomorrow night. Rangers and the Royals. Stanhouse and Nelson. Be there or be square. Brian Patterson, David Vega, Frank Rosank, D. Scott Howard, V. Dub Productions, Doug Sessoms, Phoenix Knight, Brian Hoxie, Sports Time Machine, Jeremy Brooks, Clee Baseball Fan, Doug Hutt, Hiolai Heyday, and uh, let's see here, Marlon Price, Jimmy Jam, Ron McGrath, My Name is Mud, Jim Doyle, and John Haverly, and Craig Scarborough. I think I got everyone. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Please leave a like on your way out to the turnstiles. Sub subscribe if you're not done so, and make sure you hit the bell. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong, and we'll see you guys tomorrow night. The Kansas City Royals open up the Bombay doors and absolutely blow the Texas Rangers right off the map. 18-3. to But now, an even bigger game for the Royals is tomorrow night. Does Kansas City clinch the three spot?